cotton is geometric, and it's uh, uh, this this crop that we're standing in probably has uh, 15 fruiting branches. Uh, some of those have been uh, a fruiting branch produces a bowl, and every three days it'll produce another fruiting branch. So in 15 fruiting branches, you've got 45 to 50 days of uh, of movement up the stalk. Each of those fruiting branches not only moves up the stalk, but moves out the stalk. And if it takes three days to move up the stalk, it takes six days to move one node out the stalk. So cotton, in theory, has a tremendous ability to overcome hardship because an extra week or an extra five or six days can put a whole nother layer of, uh, of cotton uh, into uh, into the basket at the end of the year. So it, but a lot of things can affect that. And you run out of time to mature that crop. You run out of uh, moisture. You run into some insect issues that are not covered by the technology. Uh, there are a lot of things that can affect that. But on the other hand, uh, it is a very forgiving crop and will survive periods of uh, stress better than most crops, better than grass crops, wheat, corn, uh, better than soybeans typically. The varieties today are much better and allow those crops to compete somewhat, but uh, cotton, in my opinion, is still the most durable uh, crop. Well, we, we do farm in the hills where irrigation is, is an issue. And uh, cotton has, has done very well. When I, when I grew up here, I remember four cotton gins in Grenada County. Now there are zero. There are no cotton gins in Grenada County. Uh, we gin our cotton in Yalabush County. Yalabush County had four or five gins and, uh, when I grew up and when I started farming. And now there's only one. We'll pick, we'll pick the cotton, and uh, uh, then we take it to the gin. It's 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 actually baled in big bales. The machine picks the cotton, bales it in big round bales of cotton and seed combined, and uh, it weighs about five thousand pounds. And it'll be uh, that will be picked up then and carried to the gin, where, where it's gin. And what a gin does is pretty much. Uh, uh, takes the seed out of the cotton. About oh, 60% of this, of, of cotton as it's picked is seed and about 40% of it is lint. And uh, lint being the fiber that we use in, uh, uh, to make thread, which then becomes uh, textiles, whether it be t-shirts or towels, blue jeans, or home furnishings, curtains, whatever. Cotton has historically uh, led the industrial revolution around the world. Uh, cotton is considered a southern crop and a southern uh, part of the United States commodity. In fact, it is. The first cotton mills, the first processing of cotton beyond and past the gin was in Lowell, Massachusetts, the first cotton mill in the United States. The cotton mill led in the United States the Industrial Revolution. It led this country into the Industrial Revolution. It, uh, the processing of that cotton brought uh, primarily young girls off the farm into an industrial environment. Machines were developed to uh, uh, efficiently convert raw cotton, cotton that had been, the seed had been removed, but raw cotton into thread. And uh, it led the mechanical uh, and industrial revolution in this country. It took approximately 200 years in the United States for uh, people in the United States to rise to a standard of living that said we don't want to work in cotton mills anymore. Cotton mills are hard work. And uh, 
that production then moved to, and is still in Central America, South Central America, it's in uh, Asia, in China, uh, cotton again uh, was a leader, and cotton mills was a leader in the Industrial Revolution in China. Because of technology, because of information, the internet, uh, the standard of living in China went from people who were willing to work many times 12 hours, 12, 15 hours a day in a cotton mill to people who were not willing to do that. So it took 200 years to reach that level in the United States. In China, it was less than 20 years. The uh, Industrial Revolution advanced so much faster there, and the standard of living for those people uh, increased to a level that they weren't willing to continue to work in cotton mills. Now, much of it's automated today. It's not as difficult to work as it was um, 200 years ago, but it, it is very difficult, and much of that production has moved from China into poorer economies around the world. And uh, the, the cotton has, I, I, I've heard cotton referred to, and, and the cotton gin is one of the 10 greatest medical discoveries in, in, in history. And you say, well, how can a cotton gin be a great medical discovery? It gave people the opportunity to wear, if you will, clean underwear. <laughs> and clean underwear then promotes healthy people and keeps disease and uh, aggravation out of the general population because you can wash your underwear. <laughs> and it, 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 cotton gin has been credited as one of the great medical inventions in the history of the world. Have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, that's true. Hey, the rules. Oh yeah, we. Uh, this comes back to your question. This is this is this is the rules for, uh, for, this is this is the rules for marriage more than anything else. No, it's for living. For living, there, there, there are three rules in our in our family, and one is we don't do anything that's not fun. Two is we don't do anything we wouldn't do for free. And three is uh, we try to do things together as a family. Words to live by. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> More water. Yeah, we'll get out of that time.